Hi guys, I realized that in this channel I never did um, a DC motor LFT spy simulation, so let's do that right now. And uh, before starting the DC motor, just a brief of theory so, DC motor, how it is made a DC motor, and how to simulate it in LFT spies. So, the DC model, the basic model of the DC motor is just a, uh, the voltage generator with the back which stands for the back EMF, then the armature resistor, array, and the inductor, L, which stands for the inductance of the motor. These have the equation, so when you apply a voltage here, V, this V will be actually equal to um, L times the I over the T, minus array times i minus the back ele electromotive force uh, sorry <laughs> this is a plus and uh, uh, you can see this in uh, in this equation here so uh, as you can see the, it, it, it is just a uh, uh, the Kirchhoff equation and uh, this is the first equation that you use to determine the armature voltage circuit uh, what, but, it is, but this is not the end, because you need also to define this back electromagnetic force and you need the magnetism equation like this, so it is, it, it is basically the, um, uh, this equation derives by, by the fact that the, the, magneti the, the, the speed, the, the, the voltage produced in a, in, in a bar subjected to a magnetic field, magnetic field from north to south just doing the uh, vector product, the cross, the, the, cross, the cross product and you, you will obtain this vector which is the back electromotive force. Now you remember also the famous equation F equal to B B is the, electromagnet is the magnetic field I is the current and uh, L is the length uh, of your road. So you can basically create uh, a system in which the mechanical and, and in which the mechanical and the electrical equation are all mixed together. Uh, you can control you can uh, control the speed. You can control the speed of the motor with either increasing the voltage or either or either decreasing the flux. So uh, this is the normal characteristic of the motor. So this is the motor DC characteristic. You expect that uh, when the torque is higher, the speed decreases because here you're increasing the load demanding. You can either, you, as, as I said before, you can either increase the speed or with the armature voltage control or the flux or the feed default or of the feed flux control. So as you can see, the higher is the voltage applied, and the other will be the speed. Naturally, this will decrease with the load, and uh, if you do instead with the, if you if you vary instead the the flux, as you can see. As I decrease the flux, as I decrease the field flux in, inside the DC motor, the speed will increase. So these are two methods of controlling the voltage, of controlling the speed, and naturally you have to compensate it with a PI or PID controllers, or IP controllers. PID is seldom used. So now let's open LT Spice and let's see how we can simulate this circuit here. So, the first thing you want to do is to imagine that there is a microcontroller or, or a driver which uh, pilots this, uh, this motor. As you can see, um, a DC motor can be either drived by a single MOSFET, so you, have a, you, so you have the motor here, the voltage here, VDD, and uh, the signal coming from the microcontroller here, or you can even uh, directly implement uh, the full bridge configuration with the four MOSFET the four MOSFET here 
this configuration will control both the speed and also the direction. Let's use this simulation, let's use this circuit instead for the first simulation. So I will use the, just the MOSFET and I will also use a um, just a pulse. Remember also to put uh, just a resistor. Let it put just one kilo because this is just a signal. So let me write uh, pulse of 0, 12, 1 milli, 10 nano, uh, 1 milli, 10 nano, 1 nano. Yes, this should be enough. I just wanted to see uh, a very uh, just the transient of this motor. I, we, we just wanted to see um, how the motor reacts in a step response. Since there is the inductance and no PI controller, we expect something of the sort. Because this is given by the inductance L and this assessment here is given by the resistance R. Let's pick a proper MOSFET. The first of the list should be good. And now let, let, let it put a resistor R with 10, a resist a inductance L, inductance L, and inductance L of 100 mm Henry. A voltage here, a rated motor can be uh, 12 volt can be enough and then you have to put the back and the electromotive force now you have two ways to modelize this you can either be lazy and just put a random value for instance 5 volts a random constant value and uh, I don't think that this, this simulation is going to be the uh, exactly the case because now if you run the simulation you're gonna see something uh, very stupid, in my opinion. Uh, not so stupid, because you have the resonance. Yes, you have some sort of resonance here. And uh, uh, some big spikes. So, but this is not the way to simulate uh, the, the model. You have to provide first the electrical schematic that I have provided you. So, this is the electrical part, electrical section. But there must be another another mechanical section so there must be the mechanical equivalent circuit and how can you do that well if you studied mechatronics like me it shouldn't be that difficult you know that there is an equivalence between electrical and mechanical for instance a spring sorry um, for instance, uh, a mechanical spring behaves like a capacitor. And if you see the equation, they are very similar. So the energy stored in a capacitor is one half C times the V square. And the energy here is one half K the X square, where, where, de where delta X is the the difference is the difference in uh, between the final position of the, of the spring and the initial position of the spring. The same applies for the inductance. The inductance is a mass, just a, a block of mass M. If you remember in mechanics, you have the, um, the, mass, uh, the, um, uh, the mass attached to a spring can be just an LC resonator in, a, in, a, in the electrical domain. And now you can understand why. Because the spring behaves like a capacitor and the mass behaves like a inductor. If you add a dump, if you add a, a damper, this will behave like a resistor and you will have a, a damped resonance, as you can imagine. So it is so it is re reasonable to assume that in mechanics the mass is equal to inductance. 
the friction is equal to our resistor and the voltage so the friction F equal to B times B this is the, visc the viscous friction can be modelized as a resistor and the drop across it can be modelized as, like, like a force hence a voltage so the back electromotive force let's just say that we put a, a oh my let's put just uh, let's, let's just put uh, this equation that we see here so a constant k we don't know the, how much is uh, big the flux times the speed so how can we do that let's just put a, a, a parameter k emf times um, minus k emf times i b2 because now why b2 because now b2 will be my voltage generator of the mechanical circuit so you're gonna have the mass let's just put the milli and the resistor r 0 0.01 this is the friction, the mass is equal to inductance, and the friction is equal to the resistor. Now we have also to provide the speed of the circuit. How can we do that? We can do that by adding another one. So this will be the speed. And by linking the current flowing here, minus i b2 let me call let me use a parameter k and uh, just a resistor here of uh, 4 mega ohm just to close the circuit not to be open so this will be the speed of your motor Let me draw this and now you have to and now you can take the speed and to construct the back electromagnetic force so you see that the back EA is equal to a constant K times the speed so now you have to take the speed here and insert it here so there will be this will be equal to i of b4 over a constant k and now b2 so because you have to link also the electrical section you will put this equal to the current flowing in the circuit here i of b1 so basically this will take this will take the current here the back electromagnetic forces take the current here but this take also take into account the speed and so now and so now you have linked the speed you have linked also uh, the speed and the mechanics to the back electromagnetic force and now your circuit is complete so let's run the simulation now and it should and it should make more sense uh sorry i forgot the parameter param uh, let, let's call it param k uh, param k this has to be very low like 0 0.003 it should be enough let me put here the same constant for, for everybody even though this constant can be different let's just assume k equal to everybody so 
let's first analyze the the behavior now so now you have the back electromotive force and now you have the proper and now you have the proper oscillation and now you have the proper oscillation given by the fact that I, I am driving this with a, a signal of zero of zero 12 volts and uh, so naturally we expect some uh, oscillation here because of, of the inductance let's check the speed and of course uh, the speed of the motor makes sense because you of course expect that the motor is uh, is active when the current here is flowing so naturally here the motor is rotating as you can see if i lower the viscous friction the speed will increase so you expect if I, if I sorry if I lower this resistance here you expect uh, the speed to increase so now it makes sense because you are reducing the heat dissipation you're using all the um, the parasitic uh, the parasitic uh, elements of this and uh, and now if you check this spike you expect this spike to be reduced also if the inductance is reduced To even damper better the system, I suggest you, I suggest to put uh, a Schottky diode here. Let's just put a Schottky diode here. The first of the list is good enough. And so now you have a clean waveform between 0 and 12 volts. So this is the, the real EMF that you are going to see. Okay. So this is the real MF that you're going to see. Now let's increase again. This guy here. Uh, this behavior here depends basically on the how much the diode is recovering because uh, if another, another plot plane here, you see that the diode is conducting here. So the meaning of this is that the diode is providing current in this phase to dump the peak induced by uh, the inductance of the motor um, so now let's uh, in so now let's uh, increase uh, this parameter here and uh, let's see how uh, the speed of the of your circuit uh, changes it doesn't change much maybe because I, I put k to everybody and so these are the parallel so these are the speed the current of the diode of the Schottky diode and also the back uh, the, the back emf that the that your circuit is uh, is uh, viewing so uh, let me put for instance uh, another Schottky diode this waveform will change it doesn't change much so the, let me put a silicon diode Okay, there is a small difference, but it is just because uh, the silicon diode maybe it's not uh, it's not as fast as the as you can see the silicon diode is not as fast as the shot key, so this curve here is longer than the shot key diode, and the assessment time is even longer. So it is it is suggested to pro to put a shot key diode since it is faster. Uh, maybe I put the wrong shot key diode because the simulation has my PC, uh, my computer is crashing. Uh, don't 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 ask why. But uh, anyway, guys, this is uh, that's all for today. Thank you for watching my video. See you. See you in the next video.